Hello health champions, Dr. Lee is here from the health and wellness sport. Now welcome board for yet another topic on bone health and joint health. Most of you know the condition called osteoporosis, which is basically weakening of bones and the result that will come as, uh, or the effects that will come as a result of weakened bones, the fractures, the rickets. Uh, in adults, we have something called osteomalacia. So in rickets will only happen in children whose bones are still developing. But if you have weak bones, then these are the effects that will happen. So I want to talk to you about uh, the calcium supplements that are used uh, to help you manage these bone conditions. So therefore, welcome to this uh, video. There is so much information that goes around on bone health, joint health, and your favorite influencers, your doctor, and most people on social media platforms are actually marketing so many products that are labeled supplements or calcium supplements. And you might end up falling prey to these lies because we solely believe that osteoporosis or weak bones are as a result of calcium deficiency or even vitamin, B defi vitamin D deficiency, which is basically not walking into the sun. We have explained vitamin B deficiency, sorry, vitamin D deficiency uh, before. So this video will highlight the mistakes that uh, definitely occur when we are taking these calcium supplements. Now, since WHO have decided that we have to quote them every other time we make a video, so I will tell you that WHO has put the requirement of calcium to 500 milligrams. And uh, I don't know where they source that because there are different types of people, different uh, races, and this can vary from one generation to the other. But I also want you to understand that calcium levels are strictly regulated in your blood. They hardly or they barely change. That means even if you take the calcium supplements, you will not increase your calcium, uh, your blood calcium levels to that huge extent to be very helpful to you. And also want you to understand there are different things that will help you recover from uh, this condition that do not necessarily mean taking only calcium. It's a holistic approach on this. And so once you understand the holistic approach, you'll understand where you need to strengthen and where the weaknesses in the system are coming from. Okay, so you'll stop thinking that osteoporosis is solely as a result of calcium deficiency. I also want you to note that high calcium, because remember it's regulated, but in case you get high calcium in the blood, there will be a serious problem because calcium plays different roles. And these roles, I will I will take them, I'll take you through them before I tell you what might end up happening with an excess amount of calcium in blood. And just before that, have you ever taken time to read the ingredients in that calcium uh, tablet, that calcium supplement tablet? Have you? Or do you just take it because the doctor said you take it with food and stuff? Have you ever taken time to read the ingredients that are there? You realize there is sugar in that tablet. There is preservatives and uh, flavorants in that tablet. There is also calcium carbonate, which is basically the major ingredient in this uh, products and did you know what calcium carbonate is that will come as a surprise to you because calcium carbonate is chalk and calcium salts are known to cause constipation that's the reason why at the end of it all you'll have constipation as a side effect of this calcium supplement supplements that are non-absorbable i will repeat that they are non-absorbable and the body does not know even how to assimilate them in the system so apart from them just being apart from calcium being regulated in the blood these tablets are, uh, or these supplements are non-absorbable. Therefore, they will cause you a lot of constipation and gut issues. So calcium plays very important roles in the system, blood clotting, muscle contraction, okay, heart function, nerve function, and bone and teeth. Also, for you to uh, compress those glands, to release the hormones, and to release the neurotransmitters, you need calcium because calcium plays a role in contraction of smooth muscles. So those are just the roles of calcium in this system. And now, when you have high amount of calcium in the system, which is called hypercalcemia, number one, you might end up getting a stroke or a heart attack. This is because calcium causes calcification of arteries, hardening and narrowing of these arteries. Now that is a problem because that will mean a high blood pressure, that will mean a limited flow of blood towards the heart and towards the brain. That is a problem because that's where you end up getting the stroke and the cardiac arrest. So high calcium levels are very dangerous and no wonder they are strictly regulated. Also, Calcium salts are known to cause uh, kidney stones. 
That's why you get the calcium oxalate stones in the kidneys. So calcium, a high amount of it will cause you kidney problems and kidney failure. And you know once you have a failing kidney, anemia will be there, heart attack will be there, uncontrolled blood pressure will be there, and hormonal imbalances because of all the issues, all the, uh, the functions that the kidney plays. So we don't want to get into that. Now, once you're told you have problems with uh, uh, osteoporosis, some of you will get desperate and you run to take milk. Every day you're taking a packet of milk, hoping that milk has a rich, uh, is a rich source of calcium. That is not true. Milk is not a rich source of calcium, specifically pasteurized milk is a very poor source of calcium and is just problematic to your system. It will cause you all those inflammatory conditions. I want you also to remember that when you have an inflamed gut, the gut because of that milk, you will now start getting problems in absorption of calcium, phosphorus. Bone, the bone is made up of very different minerals, boron, calcium, phosphorus. And for you to just um, strengthen it, you need a holistic approach. You will not need calcium alone. You will need the magnesium, you need the zinc, you need the copper, the boron, and all those. And these are what are found in diets. But now imagine you've taken that pasteurized milk, you've taken that inflammatory foods, and your gut is messed up. So you'll never even absorb the calcium adequately. You'll never even absorb other nutrients adequately that will be combined to strengthen your bone and your teeth. So that is a problem to you. Now, when you continuously take that milk, there's a, a condition called milk alkali, alkali syndrome. Milk alkali syndrome is basically a syndrome of excessive consumption of milk and also calcium supplements. Now this will bring you issues from uh, psychosis, from confusion, from lack of appetite, and cardiac arrest and kidney problem that will lead to death. So it might look like a joke, but you trying to get that calcium from that milk will lead you to this problem. And this is a very serious problem in the modern generation. So as you try to fix osteoporosis, kindly understand that calcium supplements are very crazy sometimes. So if you want to get calcium, how do you source them? You don't source them from calcium carbonate because that is just taking uh, chalk. You have to go for green leafy vegetables. Green leafy vegetables are very high, a rich source of uh, the calcium, the eggs and the bone broth. So these are just basically natural sources of uh, calcium. So thus, this is where you can get your calcium naturally. So instead of taking those calcium supplements, why don't you go for green leafy vegetables, increase it in your diet? Why don't you fix your gut so that you can absorb calcium in the adequate amounts? Why don't you drop antacids because antacids inhibit absorption of calcium so if you're using antacids apart from you just messing up the gut ph you're also causing a deficiency in absorption of calcium and also remember antacids uh, uh, they have a base their bases actually so they neutralize the stomach ph so you'll get into gastritis and all these problems okay so apart from you getting constipation because of calcium carbonate you'll also get issues with the gut and inflammation of the gut because of that. So you need a holistic approach and you will also need vitamin D. So for you to get a recovery from this condition, the bone problems, the weak bones, uh, the arthritis, even, even those joint issues that you get all the time, the pains, what do you do? You must start by fixing the gut. So once you fix the gut, you'll be able to absorb nutrients like calcium in the adequate amounts. That means you'll have to drop the inflammatory foods, the seed oils, the wheat products, the sugars, the processed carbohydrates, uh, the carbonated drinks and the rest. Now, once you do that, then you also drop the antacids if you're using any. If you have uh, gastritis, once you drop those foods, you start recovering from it, so you will not need the antacids. Okay? And then drop the supplements because of constipation. They will alter your gut, so you'll get into constipation. So drop that. And then what do you do? Where do you source vitamin D? Because vitamin D plays a very important role in assimilation of this calcium into your bones. So where do you get vitamin D? I want you to understand vitamin D comes from cholesterol. So the liver will synthesize vitamin D from cholesterol. And you need cholesterol to survive. So you need cholesterol to get vitamin D. So imagine if you're elderly, you're getting into osteoporosis or osteomalacia, and then you're told to avoid cholesterol-rich foods. You'll go into a deficiency of vitamin D, and therefore you'll not be able to synthesize your calcium, or you will not be able to synthesize your vitamin D, and then you'll not get uh, a recovery from this condition. So you need vitamin D. And for you to get vitamin D, again, I want you to understand that vitamin D is activated by the liver and then by the kidneys. So you need a functional kidneys. So if you need functional kidneys to activate vitamin D, drop calcium, because this calcium supplement, because they affect the kidney, they cause kidney disease. So these supplements, however much they're being marketed as healthy to you, they are not as uh, healthy as you might think they are. So you need vitamin D, meaning you'll have to drop the fatty liver. So you'll need a functional liver, you'll need a functional kidney, then you'll need cholesterol-rich diet. Again, vitamin D is part of the fat-soluble vitamins that are called ADEC or DECA. 
A, D, E, and K. So for you to get this, you need to consume diets that are rich in saturated fats. So you'll need that fatty meat, you'll need the liver, you'll need the eggs, you'll need uh, organ meats, okay, in plenty. And then you'll need saturated fats, the ghee, the tallow, the, the lard, the coconut oil. Those are what will help you absorb vitamin A, D, E, and K. Now also remember, calcium is involved in blood clotting and so is vitamin K. Okay, so those two are very important. You cannot get these two if at all you are not consuming a fatty meal. You need fats for this. So you'll have to drop that seed oil and start cooking using saturated fats. And then there are ladies who are always using steroid drugs, even the people in the gym, those who want to build muscles. You're using steroid drugs to gain those muscles. And there are ladies who are abusing steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, the likes of dexamethasone, uh, the prednisolone, those steroids, the hydrocortisone. There are women who are abusing dexamethasone so much to help them gain a, uh, some weight, have a round face, uh, the moon face, and also have the bigger hips. You're getting into problems because those steroidal and inflammatory drugs are involved in weakening of bones. So apart from them causing uh, an even distribution of fat in your body, they are also causing weakening of bones. They are causing kidney failure, so they'll cause water retention. So you, you're, you're adding weight or you're adding uh, your round face. It's not coming as a result of anything, but it's coming as a result of kidney problems. So you might be having a side effects uh, of these drugs, which is kidney failure, thinking that you're adding healthy weight and you're adding a very good hip. But in real sense, you have problems with the bones, weak bones. That's why you will end up getting those hip fractures the bones are very weak, so you get fractures all the time, and fixing that is a lot of money. So avoid steroid drugs by all means. Because also remember, steroid drugs will cause an increase in blood sugar levels. Okay? And you don't want that, because we want to fix our kidneys so that we can absorb vitamin D in the adequate amounts. So protect your organs by all means. So it's a holistic approach, and if you just view it in one dimension, you'll end up losing the point. So now we have fixed this. We have dropped the foods that are in, uh, inflammatory. We've started absorbing our calcium. We have a fixed liver and we have a fixed kidney, so you have activated your vitamin D, and then you've dropped the steroids, so your liver and the kidneys are also functional. Now I also want you to remember that in postmenopausal women, women who are beyond menopause, you produce estrogen through your, your, your adrenals because once you go past this, your ovaries, past menopause, your ovaries stop producing uh, estrogen or diminish, there's diminished production of estrogen from the ovaries because they are, they are dying slowly. So you start producing estrogen through the adrenals and for women, estrogen plays a very important role in bone density and bone mass. Therefore, if estrogen starts going down because of uh, your failing ovaries and then you'll have weak bones. So the body compensates for the failing organs or for the failing ovaries by causing the adrenals to produce estrogen to compensate. But what kills the adrenals? Uh, highly inflammatory foods again, seed oils, soy products, wheat. Once you eat that, you start killing the adrenals. That means your levels of estrogen will go so low and your bone density will go very low. So you'll have brittle bones. That is another point I needed to mention here. So for you to do a holistic approach, what do you do? Number one, you fix the gut through fasting, through eating healthy keto, and eating uh, good foods apart from, uh, and dropping the inflammatory foods. And then, saturated fats, because you want to absorb fat-soluble vitamins, you also want to uh, synthesize cholesterol or vitamin D from the cholesterol that is coming with saturated fats. And then, vitamin K. Now, I want you to know vitamin K, not just vitamin any vitamin K, specifically vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 sends calcium to where it belongs, which is in the bones. Okay, combination of calcium with phosphorus and sends it to the bones to strengthen your bones. And also it prevents you from calcification of the arteries. So if you're taking just uh, uh, vitamin D or calcium carbonate, uh, calcium supplements plus vitamin D, but you're not taking vitamin K2, that's when you end up getting calcification of those arteries and you'll end up in heart failure. So for you to reverse that or for you to send calcium where it belongs, then you have to take vitamin K2 injection. So for those of people who are uh, in the West, people who see sunlight very minimal times of the, of the year, then you need vitamin D injection, also plus vitamin K2 so that you send the calcium where it belongs. Then lower your stress. So this is just fixing osteoporosis. This is also fixing your arthritis, your bone problems. How do you do it? Fix the gut, saturated fats, vitamin K2. Okay. Then low stress because stress increases your cortisol levels and cortisol brings a problem in bone uh, softening. So now lower your stress. And then enjoy the sun because the sun 
UV radiation is needed to activate vitamin D or the cholesterol that is in the skin so that you start the synthesis of, synthesis of vitamin D. And then the diet, basically here we are talking about green leafy vegetables, the eggs, the organ meats, dropping the inflammatory foods, and then high fatty diet, high fat protein, vegetables and low on carbohydrates, and then sleep, which basically stabilizes all your hormones. So in case you've not picked anything in this video, understand that calcium supplements will not help you as much as you would have wanted them to help you. If at all, you're thinking that osteoporosis or weakening of these bones is caused by only calcium deficiency, you're getting it wrong. It is a holistic approach. So however much calcium you take in, you will never take this calcium to the bones if you have not fixed vitamin D, if you have not fixed the gut for absorption of that calcium, if you have not fixed your kidneys and your liver, if you have not fixed uh, the, the, the foods and the diets, if you have no sleep, good sleep, and if you don't work in the sun. So this suggests basically holistic approaches of this. And then above all, you can go to the gym to strengthen the bones. So if you're here already, you already know what to do. So that is basically what I had to tell you about the calcium supplements and their relationship in osteoporosis.